the planet Earth. Some call me nature. I am very passionate about the planet Earth. A living, breathing planet capable of sustaining whatever life forms we see fit to deposit on it. Spock, judging by the pollution content of the atmosphere, I believe we have arrived. It's the planet stupid. No, 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 it's the planet stupid. Our guide for It's the Planet Stupid is eco-journalist Belinda Weymouth. Hi, Belinda. Belinda, I don't hear, but... Uh, uh, you are muted, and mm. she fixed it. Oh, that was a first. I've never kept myself muted when I need to be actually heard. <laughs> well, uh, it's uh, nice yeah. that you're knocking down some new uh, There's new never territory. been anything like this. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know what happened. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I... We'll let you start wherever you want. Good news, bad news. You have both often. What would you like oh, to man. begin with? Yeah, it's it's pretty intense out there right now. I mean, it's it's a lot. Let's let's start by talking about what's happening in China because it's a it's a bad news thing, but there's a good news part of it on the flip side. So why don't we do that first? So All right. China, uh, as uh, is happening in you know countries all over the world is really 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 feeling the effects of climate change right now you know incredible flooding they're expecting so much flooding this month they have already moved tens of thousands of villages away from flood prone areas they've sent in hundreds of soldiers they're spending 200 million dollars i mean this is yeah flooding that they have experienced so far and the thing is uh, a lot of their um, factories and financial stuff uh, is along their east coast. It's uh, in low-lying areas, and it's super, super flood-prone. And then they also have these enormous concrete, you know, cities that they've been building at a rate of knots, and they're really flood-prone. So the thing that and and then last year they had you know incredible heat waves, which you know the U.S. is having having right now, as is Western Europe, you know. Um, you know, countries all over the world, you know, in Asia. I mean, it's it's intense. It's game on. So it sort of feels like we're at a tipping point. I just want to point out one thing for everyone just to contextualize this. You know, we've been told uh, ever since the Paris Accord, you know, we have to keep uh, global heating to 1.5 degrees Celsius. That's, that's the important level. Well, we've been at 1.5 degrees Celsius warmer than pre-industrial times for the past 12 months. And this is what the weather looks like. So take a look. And um, the thing that, that the Chinese officials did you know, was that for years they were able to say, well, we believe in the science of climate you know, change. We know that it's happening. But it's all those uh, developed countries that did this. They put all the emissions up into the atmosphere. And historically, uh, the developed countries did. But China, in its you know huge industrialization um, and you know very rapid industrialization, you know all their coal-fired power plants, all the um, concrete production to build these mega cities, they're the biggest emitter, and they are you know bearing um, you know or you know at the brunt of you know what it feels like to have this hotter atmosphere. So they've had to really change their tune. Now the good thing about this. Um, is, is we already know they are manufacturing, you know, they're the biggest manufacturer of solar panels. They are making these small EVs, electric vehicles that are being um, uh, exported all over Asia. And they're good because they're small and um, uh, it's a good price point and it's going to make a difference. But the thing about what's happening, you know, uh, in their own country, you know, for a long time, what they were concerned about were the soot levels in cities, you know, the, the smog was so bad, but now they get it with the, you know, the melting of their glaciers, the flooding of their cities and these incredible heat waves. Uh, they have to install more renewables and the uh, IEA, the International Energy Agency, is predicting that within four years, China will be installing 60% of new um, renewable energy uh, uh, power plants. And that's a, that's huge, like 60% globally. That, that, that's the lion's share of it. But obviously, the rest of the world will benefit from that as they have to really ramp up their you know, manufacturing of you know, solar power panels, wind turbines, batteries, it, all those things. And, and you're saying it's those things that China's doing, it's solar power, wind to turbines, et cetera. That's what they're doing. They're not doing nuclear or whatever. I when don't you talk hear. about other energy, yeah, nuclear. Yeah, yeah, so no. I, I, the the thing I mainly hear about them is, you know, a real push for renewables. I mean, look, there's always talk 
about nuclear and about these smaller, you know, um, yeah. Yeah, the, the uh, kind of like the uh, Ma and Pa reactors that will be on corners. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, Ma and Pa. Right. Oh, that's such a good yeah. way to put it, Mark. Well, no. here's the thing. They still cost tons of money and they'll still, it still takes so long to actually construct them. You know, we need help now. We need to, you know, be, you know, using um, zero carbon energy, uh, you know, net zero energy now. So uh, that's your solar panels, your, you know, the thing we talked about last week, you know, the tidal waves, you know, putting those figure eight, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, they look like gliders into, you know, tidal areas around, you know, countries, waterways. There are just way faster things that we can implement now. Um, and uh, nuclear just, you know, isn't, you know, isn't I that. see this comment. Maybe you want to respond to it. I read that even if we stop our activity, Karen says, it would take a thousand years for climate change to begin to reverse itself. We need to look um, at how to mitigate. Let me let's just finish real quick. We need to look yeah. at how to mitigate what is already here, what is already happening. Can you speak to that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is unfortunately true, you know. And um, yeah, we, we're we're sort of over. You know, it feels like that. You know, the tipping point. We're sort of um, uh, yeah. I mean, this is. You know, I mean, I I don't like to be doom and gloom but yeah there's already so much heat in the atmosphere and a thing that you often hear is that you know we're only really now feeling the effects of of all the greenhouse gases that have been put up there you know sort of you know decades ago and and we're still putting greenhouse gases you know so many emissions up into the atmosphere so what that effect will be you know in another five ten years time yeah, no, it's 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 an intense. I mean, I, I would say we have to do both. We have to mitigate, and we have to also protect. So there's no reason we can't do both. Uh, yeah, and, and that's an interesting know. thing with Chinese officials is because they're so into their image, they are really actually you know going into the countryside and helping people. You know, to 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 be moving villages out of the way of floods where they just used to you know leave the villages there. You know. Um, I mean, they're really getting for their for their image, you know, as the Communist Party. They have to do that, and um, uh, I mean, that's good if it if it protects people. But yeah, no, we're at we're at you know, adaptation at time. We're at adaptation. No, good uh, I just lost her a little bit, Albert. Did you hear that? I don't know. She's uh, signal maybe just a little degraded for a second. Um, all right. Can so what else do we have? Now I hear you. Yeah, thank you. Oh, okay, good, good. So the. Um, <laughs> this is this is a bit. So crazy. that was the good news, bad news in China yeah, yeah. with the yeah. uh, with the crisis so, so, hitting them and climate. Yeah. So China will ramp up um, uh, the installation of renewable energy, and you know the rest of the world, you know, can benefit from that. Um, the other thing that's really in the news right now, uh, and this is not going to be music to Kim's ears, I'm afraid, because uh, Kim is very um, uh, concerned about plastic pollution. And uh, I know is, you know, single-handedly making, you know, huge efforts to reduce her uh, plastic consumption. Oh, you know, I didn't know that. I, I, I wasn't aware of that. I Kim, how are yeah, you? Yeah, wow. it's of, yeah, it's one of her things. Yeah, it's one of mm. her things, plastic pollution. Um, so, you know, we've been getting a lot of research talking about, you know, that, that it's crossed, you know, that we're ingesting it, that, you know, um, it's, you know, uh, I mean, basically what's happening right now, Mark, is we're sort of on the precipice here to, you know, here also, um, because this is, you know, another, you know, it, this comes from gas, plastic, and the fossil fuel industry, as they see their profits from, you know, gas going down, they're really into ramping up the production of plastic. But we're on the verge of a plastic health crisis. And, you know, we know that it's getting into us. We know that we're ingesting, you know, they say approximately, you know, a credit card's worth of plastic per week in the air that we breathe, the water that we drink. Um, uh, it's in our environment. They've found it in placental tissue. It's in, you know, um, you know, the 40 men who they did the research on and they found it in their testicles. It's in semen. It's, you know, it's in our blood. It's in us. And, you know, plastic comes with a lot of chemicals and a lot of these chemicals aren't regulated. And, you know, it's got phthalates in it. It's got um, uh, bisphenols. It's got PFAS, you know, the forever chemicals that we've talked about. And what's happening, I think, that is good is that the awareness um, curve is 
going up and scientists are really getting you know angry and what this latest research said and i'll um i'll uh, tweet the story so our listeners can see it but you know we have to really curb these single-use plastics this has to stop um i mean this is you know this is a beach um you know this is crazy i mean i just i just was talking the other day a friend of mine's daughter is going on her gap year to indonesia to serve she's so excited and i said to her i said do you I'm just going to, you know, want to ask you this question. I don't want to freak you out, but do you know about, you know, how much plastic is on the beaches in Indonesia? And she said, oh, no, I had no idea. You know, she thinks she's going to this place and she's going to surf on these pristine beaches. Well, I sent Tony a couple of photos this morning. I was in Bali back in 2018. Um, and, you know, you go to the Komodo National Park to see the Komodo dragons. And the first thing you see when you get off the boat as you're, you know, walking um, up the, you know, the dock and onto the beach is just, you know, this, you know, kind of plastic because they don't have the uh, recycling um, facilities that we do. And, and even with those recycling facilities, I mean, we can get our plastic out of sight, out of mind. But, you know, where our plastic um, recycling you know, percentage used to be at about, you know, almost 10%. It was 9.4%. It's down to five. And, you know, we just produce too much plastic. And what these scientists are saying is we have to stop with the most egregious. We cannot, yeah, that an international plastics accord, like the Paris, you know, climate agreement that we have to keep uh, global heating down to 1.5 degrees Celsius, like the Montreal protocol that said we have to curb uh, chlorofluorocarbons because we knew that they were destroying the ozone, which you know protects us. The ozone that's up in the stratosphere. Um, we and that's have a great example because uh, it is a victory that was actually marked by what you're talking about: public awareness. This is much yeah. more difficult because you have costs that are so low. That's why these single-use plastic things have become part of the American culture of convenience. It's so inexpensive. Uh, the sustainable yeah. stuff, the uh, these wood um, forks and knives, the you know, there's all kinds of there's a world of takeout food that can live in sustainable type containers and all the rest, even bags that you know are fully biodegradable, etc. But yeah. that costs a little more. It will take some kind of public mandate for yeah. that to change, I think. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. But but the thing is, you know, look, we've got SB 54 here in California, which is saying, number one, by 2028, we have to we have to be rid of 25% of single use plastics. I mean, when I see people, you know, in the supermarket putting a packet of blueberries that are in a plastic container inside a plastic bag to put in their trolley, you know, I mean, I, it's all I can do not to say, uh, excuse me. Um, you know, I mean, our, we've become so reliant on it and it's become sort of second nature. But, um, you know, we, the, the problem is, is once again, we're up against the fossil fuel industry and they are so into their profits. And during the fracking boom, we created all this methane and ethane. And as we've talked about, you know, these export facilities that we have, we're putting all along, you know, what put all, all along the Gulf Coast. So those will go to other countries, not just to, um, be burned as natural gas and make, um, you know, uh, electricity. They'll also be used in cracker facilities. Cracker facilities are where you turn these gases into plastics. And the whole world is sort of ramping up on single-use plastics. And I sent Tony a, a picture of a market that I was in in, in uh, Bali, and it was little sachets. And they're, talk about single-use, they're single-use, they're single portion, they're little, it's a sh one sash sachet serving of um uh, shampoo or hair conditioner. And the problem with those little plastic items is that they have foil in them, they have plastic, uh, they're really, really hard to um, recycle. And the plastics industry is sort of ramping up to make more and more of this awful single use plastic and deluge, you know, developing countries with it, who, as we saw from that photo just before, you know, their beaches and waterways are already covered in, you know, and full of plastic. Um, and one of the things that I love that these scientists said was, you know, we have to really start cutting back on the single use plastic. And then we also have to stop. They called it the BS that's coming from the industry because the industry is trying to tell us, you know, we can recycle and it's our responsibility as consumers to be good. But they're not 
taking responsibility for their part of it and they're creating all this pollution and then they also are not properly labeling things so that consumers are actually aware that they're using a pla you know they're getting a takeout from a restaurant in a plastic container that has you know chemicals that are going to you know leach into their food sure um, sure and what what that does so i think and and the the thing that happened here in 2022 when california passed sb54 and this was so much work from environmental groups and we have a senator here our senator actually ben allen um who's such a champion for plastics and what SB54 has said is that by 2028, there has to be a drop of 25% in ridiculous single-use plastics. You know, not everything has to go in a plastic bag. We don't have to buy vegetables in a supermarket that are sitting in polystyrene with, you know, cling film wrapped around them. Um, do you like how I'm <laughs> just... Yeah, I'm thank you for that. I, really, for I wouldn't have been able to picture it without that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, it would be really hard to, to envision it. Um and they're also talking about, you know, by 20, I think it's by 2032, 65% of the plastics produced have to be truly recyclable, um, not just low-grade plastics that you, you know, can't properly recycle. And the other thing that they did, which, uh, you know, to me is, you know, unbelievable, and, and it could be very hard to, you know, to sort of make sure it's, um, you know, the oversight really makes makes it work. But there uh, is going to be a decades long, and I think it starts in 2027, where in, plastics industry companies are going to be part of the recycling process. They're, they're going to have to put in $500 million a year towards plastic mitigation research and really helping with the problem so so california's really said hey extended producer responsibility a thing you know we've talked about before on the show epr you can't just you know put the stuff out into the commons um you and have to own the effects you have to own the effects of what you uh, exactly you put out. Yeah. exactly and so so it'll be really interesting to see how sb54 you know plays out in california and if it's really able you know to be as effective as we want it to be and then it would be something. So there's this intergovernmental, uh, they're called the Negotiating Committee on Plastic Pollution. It was um, set up in 2022. Uh, and they're pretty, they're pretty outspoken and forceful about just, you know, how egregious this plastic pollution is and that we have to rein it in because it's, you know, it's just having such a negative effect, you know. And we haven't even talked about, you know, the seabirds out there and the, you know, the fish and the mammals. That well, are the, the ocean is being treated like an open sewer. It has been treated like an open sewer for decades now. And for every bit of plastic that washes up on shore and that is a grotesque image of the sort that we just saw, you go out in the ocean and it's just, it's, it's wall to wall plastic and it's killing off sea life. It's destroying habitats. It's awful. And I didn't know this, but Karen is saying Japan is crazy about packaging in plastics. They double, even triple package items. It's gotten worse. She also said, I was noting just as you were uh, speaking, I'm trying to mm -hmm. note the chats that might pretend to what we're talking about. Yeah. She said, Japan produces more packaging per capita and then they throw it in the oceans because it's too expensive to pay for your garbage to be disposed. Now, again, I don't know how much of that is true and to what extent it happened, but I mean, it is certainly true that America isn't the only environmental outlaw on the planet. Uh, and there is a rising outlaw that I think you've spoken to in this visit in China, but you also see in China a realization that the outlaw ways aren't going to be the ways to sustain a society, that they're going to have to clean up their act, literally. So, yeah. but that was interesting yeah. on Japan. I didn't know that. Well, well, it's so crazy because when you think about, you know, that we used to have milk that came in a glass bottle and you returned the bottle and it was sanitized and refilled with milk and, you know, none of us got sick. It all worked. I mean, we sort of, you know, we, you know, I buy now my milk in a, in a glass bottle. It has a, you know, plastic lid. And, you know, the crazy thing about a plastic lid on a, on a, on a bottle, and this goes for, you know, your Dasani water, your Coca-Cola, you know, whatever you want to drink out of a plastic bottle. As soon as you're taking that cap off, little microplastics are being dislodged and going into that, you know, that drink it is in the bottle that you're about. That's to wild. That's and, wild. And, yeah. and the thing about this is unlike tobacco or alcohol, this is involuntary in, you know, ingestion of um, a toxin. Uh, yeah, toxins of, you know, hormone disrupting carcinogenic, you know, toxins. So 
Uh, I'm all for, you know, going back to the old ways. I would love it if we all, you know, if Coca-Cola came in a glass bottle, they all got returned. They got, you know, properly washed out, refilled with Coke. You know, you yeah. And the water. reason that doesn't happen is because of uh, price. Yeah. It's just yeah. so much more convenient. People, yeah. uh, a six pack of Coca-Cola in glass bottles is heavy. Uh, it's more fragile and it would be more expensive to produce. This is the, the log jam we're, um, we're, we're in. And look at Karen oh. again on, <laughs> on Japan. Mark, vending machines are big, big, big in Japan and require a lot of plastic packaging. That's a growing trend. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's, learned a lot it's, about Japan. The thing right. is, we're sort of we're, we're we're you know on this you know very linear linear trajectory. The way that we you know are manufacturing, you know, it's from you know extraction of resources. You know, you manufacture them, you consume them, and you throw away the waste. And as we've talked about before, you know, it has to be a circular. If we're using um, aluminium and um, glass and things that can truly, truly be recycled, you know, we're in a circular and we, we don't have to use so much energy, you know, to manufacture more. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's turning back the clock, but it's turning back to the, the clock to um, a time that was more sustainable. And we just have to, you know, we have to work out ways to be more sustainable. And it has to come, you know, Kim, shout out to you for your fabulous dedication to you know having less plastic in your home and being really conscientious and to all our listeners who are Ch -ch 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 yeah <laughs> well, <laughs> yay you uh, yeah kim, but, kim but getting the, the shout out right, we wow. do need we do need you know policy like the policy that you know gavin newsom our governor signed in 2022 that said california is going to reduce its plastic look we spend $500 million a year in California to keep plastics out of the waterways and to get it off the beaches once it's come down the waterways is, is in the beach, you know, on the beach. It's, that's, yeah, it's that's not a very cost-effective way that we, we do it no, all, is it? No. Um, you can, uh, uh, we've got to wrap up. You can oh, okay, Melinda. I had one positive story, but I'll do it. I, I don't have time. <laughs> I don't have time. I've got to treat you like the other contributors. You yeah, people come on here. You can't pace yourselves. Why are you yelling? You get, you get out over your skis, and then it's on me. Look, like, well, I didn't get my time. Why are you yelling? All right. How Belinda, much do you care I, about the planet? I adore you for bringing these things to light. And as you know, since I wallow in negativity and a bleak outlook toward humanity, I'm oddly maybe a little glad that we didn't get to the good news. Yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm being honest. Okay. Hilarious. We'll have it for next, next time. Week. Next You'll, week. You're not going to, you cannot, you cannot. Why don't you lead week. with the good news, Belinda? That was your choice. You led with the bad news, didn't Why you? Why are you yelling? All right. The lovely Belinda can be reached on social media at Belinda Weymouth, W-A-Y-M-O-U-T-H. And we will revisit with her next week. Belinda, thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Bye-bye. And everybody. that's It's the Planet Stupid for today. More. It's the planet stupid. No, no, no. It's the planet stupid. Next time, only on the Mark Thompson Show. Hi, it's Mark, and I thought that was great. Hit the notification bell. You'll know whenever there's a new video being dropped, and please subscribe to our channel to help us save the universe.